I will demonstrate how to use the three lasso tools available in Photoshop. They are the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, and the magnetic lasso tool. You can reference our intro to selections lesson for more detailed information on the specifics of each of these selection tools. If you'd like to follow along with me, you can download a few images from opengraphicarts.org or even pull up images of your own. If you'd like to use the specific images I'm going to use, these are the four images that I will use for the intro to selection demo videos. The selection tools are found on the tools panel. If you work your way from the top to the bottom, they should be the third tool down. If you push and hold, you can see that I have the lasso tool and the polygonal lasso tool. Depending on your version of Photoshop, the magnetic lasso tool or even the lasso and polygonal lasso tools may not be in the same place. Uh, when in doubt, you can always come to the bottom of the tools panel and push the three buttons to see additional selection tools. And so you can see here that the magnetic lasso tool is not included on my tools panel. As a side tangent, if you want to control how many tools, which tools, and where they're located on your tools panel, you can hit the edit toolbar option and you can drag and drop tools. So if it's on the right hand column, I can move it into my flyout menu for my magnetic lasso tool and my polygonal lasso tool. If I use the polygonal lasso tool more often than the regular lasso tool, I can make it the first tool in the tools flyout menu. So now when I push and hold on the polygonal lasso tool, I also have the regular lasso and the magnetic lasso. Let's start with the regular lasso tool. The lasso tool can be used just like a pencil. You click and then you drag and wherever you move your cursor, you are creating a selection. This is not the best selection to use if you have to be very specific. So oftentimes you'll use this to make a big, rough, broad selection. So maybe you're trying to isolate the eye in this picture. You would make a big, rough selection around the eye, and then you would work on refining that selection. Sometimes it's because you want to move an element. So maybe I want to move the head. I could make a rough selection all the way around the head and the stand, and then cut it to move it and put it in another document where I then will refine my selection so I just have the head and not the background. Command or Control D will always deselect. If you don't like key commands, you can always do select and then choose deselect. The second tool is the polygonal lasso tool. It's the tool that I use most frequently of the three lasso tools. The way that it works is that it only applies a path of that, that is creating your selection every time you click. And so if I click and then I hold my uh, cursor, I'm just moving the cursor around, I'm not holding it down, uh, I can decide where the next point in my path will go. So I can click, 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 and come back to the beginning and close my selection. And I get the marching ants or the selection marquee that's active. And so if I was trying, let's go to a different example that has more rough outlines. If I was trying to select the mouth on this wood, wooden sculpture, I could click, 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 click all the way down. When I get to the curve part, I'll just add more clicks so that it goes around the curve nicer. I would say this is our first step into creating customized selections or refined customized selections. As you get better at selections, you'll learn that the lasso tools are not the best tools to use, but they do help you make quick selections or selections that you don't have to worry too much about. And so maybe we use this to do a, a color adjustment. We wanna change the color of the mouth, so then we make a selection of just the mouth and then we slide the slider until it's the color that we want it to be. The last tool is the magnetic lasso tool. The magnetic lasso tool, if I push and hold, I can find on my little flyout menu. Um, the way it works is you click to activate your selection and then you hover or drag your cursor without clicking to show the magnetic lasso tool where you would like to make a selection and then the magnetic lasso tool will try to figure out where the selection should be and it will start to snap into place. You can also click to add an anchor point if it's not working exactly the way that you want. This is one that you really need to see in action to see how it works. 
So if I wanted to make a selection of this ice cream cone, I can click on the edge of the ice cream cone. And then without me pushing down, I'm just going to drag my cursor. As I drag it up, can you see how Photoshop is starting to create a path? And every time that path twists or turns, it adds an anchor point. And so I can hover around the outside. I can even click to force an anchor point. If something is happening where I don't, like I'm worried it's not going to get the little point in the cone here, I can click out here and then when it comes back to force the path to hover around the outside. Now this is useful if you have a clear foreground and background. So the background in this image is blurry, so it does a pretty good job of making the selection. I'm not gonna select the whole thing, it'll take forever for the video. But make sure you go, always go back to the first uh, place that you started your path and click to close your selection and then you have an active selection. Let me show you the magnetic lasso tool again. This is another example of an image that would work pretty well. Let me zoom in here. Uh, pretty well with the magnetic lasso tool because there's a clear distinction between the sculpture head and the background. And so if we just click anywhere along the outside of the shape, we can slowly hover. See how it didn't get that corner so great? I may have wanted to click inside the corner to force it. And so this one, we can go around pretty quickly. I'm going to press my space bar, which turns the cursor into a hand, so I can pan or click and drag. And then I'm going to release the space bar and continue with the magnetic lasso. And it's doing a pretty good job of creating a rough, straight-edged selection. And I'm going to finish this selection so that we can use it in our next demo video. I would like you to practice using the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, and the magnetic lasso tool to make at least, try to make at least three selections with each tool as a good practice. If what you were trying to do is what you an, end up doing, uh, then you can move on. If you're having issues with selections, make sure you come to online office hours so that you can get some extra help making your selections. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up this video here, but I'm gonna finish my selection. I'm gonna go all the way around until I get back to the beginning and see how it didn't do such a great job on the straight edge of the bottom. Uh, and then in the next video, we'll talk about some additional selection methods and ways to refine selections. You know what? I'm so close. I'm just going to go all the way back and finish.